Aloha my friends, Christina here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I am personally preparing for an emergency food shortage, along with my best healthy tips for a sustainable plant-based lifestyle. No one can deny that the world has changed a lot in the last four to five years, locally and globally. There's a lot of uncertainty, conflict, confusion, and crisis. These are scary times, and no one really knows what to expect or what will happen. It's best to be prepared no matter what. My intention is to encourage you and to inspire you to take charge of your health, to become more sustainable, and to think one step ahead. Even if you're not worried about a food shortage, winter is coming up and all of the tips suggestions and items on my list will be useful to you. Unlike those who teach survival skills, I really focus on and discuss the importance of long-term sustainability. This is not common. I'm not just going to tell you what to stuff in your pantry. I'm going to show you how to create a new foundation for yourself that allows you to be prepared in any moment, no matter what happens, for the rest of your life. This is valuable. I'm sure you've heard of the word sustainability, and I'm sure you've heard it thrown around a lot, but do you know what it actually means and why it's important? Sustainability is the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level. It's also the avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance. I've spent the last five years doing my best to become as sustainable as possible, not just by growing my own food, but living off of well water, purchasing reusable items, and even supporting more eco-friendly and organic clothing. Living on an island has forced me to become way more resourceful because I don't have access to as many places or things as I would if I were living on the mainland. There's no Amazon Prime here. I've discovered so much, and I'll tell you, it's a lifestyle and it's a mindset, even if it is more challenging at first. There's a way for all of us to incorporate more sustainability into our lives so that if a shortage does actually happen, you'll already be prepared and there will be much less inconvenience to your life. There is no need to fear, simply prepare. I've spoken with a few people and I've also watched and seen preparation lists from others out there and the one thing I've noticed that most don't tend to focus on is the consumption of fresh foods. People are storing the most atrocious things in their pantry for emergency situations. I have seen the worst ads out there selling ridiculous astronaut foods in air suction bags that will last a million years or even just cooked and frozen dried burgers and pizzas. As tempting as that might sound to some of you, those options are not good for your health long-term. Most of these things that they're storing are latent with chemicals and they have a forever shelf life. That's not food. Just because something like this might happen doesn't mean that you can't eat fresh foods or that you'll be stuck consuming canned goods for a period of time. Something different I will be sharing with you in this video is my take on how you can still consume plenty of fresh and healthy foods even during a food shortage. These companies are trying to make money off of you instead of educating or empowering you to be autonomous, aligned, healthy, and more sustainable. So today I have put together a list of 12 important items or suggestions for you. We're going to cover the essentials of food, power, water, and air, along with other basic necessities. I leave it up to you to purchase enough for a six month to a year supply or however much your family needs. Every six months, you can reevaluate and refresh as you see fit. Make sure you're purchasing enough food to provide sufficient calories for both you and your families if an emergency or food shortage does occur. So let's jump in. The first thing that people tend to do in any modern emergency moment is grab their phones, send an SOS, call for help, call loved ones, etc. 
We live in such a technology-driven society now that having access to your phone, laptop, or other communication devices is pretty much essential. If you don't have power, it means you will lose access to these devices at some point. One of the best investments I've recently made is getting the Ideal Living Portable Solar Panel and Power Station. The power station provides you with a dependable source of power no matter where you are or the situation. It's charged through the solar panel and it has multiple different outlet sources and built-in voltage. Not only is it mobile, but also it's lightweight, water resistant, and high capacity of 100 watts to charge multiple devices at one time. You can connect your phone, laptop, water filtration system, GPS systems, tablets, and more all to this one device. If you're stuck in an emergency situation, you need one of these at your side. Not only will it allow you to keep your devices charged and in communication, but also it provides you with fresh filtered water. That is a game changer. I've reached out to Ideal Living and they've been so kind as to offer my community here $100 off not only the solar panel and power station, but also their water filtration system. How incredible is that? $100 off both is major and I am so thankful to them. There's no code, you just need to make sure that you use the specific link that is in the description of this video or you will not see the discount. I've added that link below for you and I'll also be sure to pin it in the comments. So please check out that link below. Whether you're an outdoor enthusiast, adventurer, or someone who wants to prepare for the unexpected, this will be one of the best investments you have ever made. You'll feel much safer having one of these in your home or in your car with you. I highly recommend getting one. Click on that link below. Next up, we have to talk about food. I know most people would probably say that having power and water is more important, but I believe that having fresh foods is equally as important. I know most people wouldn't mention this, but I'm going to because I think it's important. Now is the time to start learning. The first and easiest thing you can learn to do is to grow your own sprouts at home. No soil or sun is needed. It's so easy to do and it's inexpensive. You can grow cups and cups of sprouts for less than $1 a day. Sprouts are loaded with minerals, amino acids, and more. I have a video on how to grow your own sprouts at home. I've linked it below for you. I use the organic and non-GMO seeds from True Leaf Market. They are the best. And they have their own seed survival kit that you can get with seeds that will last you for over a year. I've also linked that below for you. You will never be without something to eat if you have this seed kit on hand. So please check out my video and link below so that you can start sprouting. My second suggestion for consuming fresh food sustainably is to grow your own microgreens. You can grow your own microgreens on trays around your house and eat fresh salads daily. The seeds are so cheap. You can eat cups and cups of microgreens for about a dollar a day. I also did a recent video on how to grow your own microgreens on your countertops and that video was also linked below for you. It's great education. Please check out the seeds from True Leaf Market and thank me later. My third suggestion for growing your own food is to grow your own garden. You'll notice that I'm currently standing in my garden as I'm sharing this information with you. This is my third suggestion because I know that not everyone is in a situation where they are able to have a garden right now. But it can be easy to do if you're willing to grow in bins on your porch, beds in your front yard, or pots on your windowsill. Now is the time to start if you are able. I created a YouTube video for you showing you how I built my garden from beginning to end. It's linked below for you. It took me six months to design and build my garden. And since then, my garden has been incredibly abundant. 
I eat from it every single day, and not only does it save me so much money, but it also provides me with a sense of food security. I'm basically eating 60 to 70% of my diet straight from my own garden. You can do that too? How cool is that? Lastly, in regards to fresh food, and this is so important, find your local farmers and support them. You can still incorporate fresh fruits and veggies into your daily routine. This is how generations before it made it through difficult times. They supported their neighbors and they traded what was valuable. So even if you're growing your own sprouts or microgreens, or even if you're growing your own veggies in your garden, you can still get more variety through other local or organic farmers. And by doing this, you create a sustainable community. Dry foods. Dry foods encompass so many different things. And for someone like me, these staples are essential to provide variety, calories, flavor, enjoyability, and more. In my dry foods category, I have nuts and seeds. I use nuts and seeds to make my salad dressings every night and also other healthy snacks. They are loaded with good fats and heavy in calories to help sustain you. I have purchased a ton of nuts and seeds in bulk from Terrasol. Their prices are great. I've also heard that Essential Organics is great and all of those are linked below for you. More dried foods that I like are dried fruits such as dates, nut butters, flax crackers, raw granolas or cereals. I've added kelp noodles in these categories because they have a longer shelf life. These can last for at least six months in your fridge or cooler and you can make noodles with them. Cacao beans or pods to make desserts. These are loaded with antioxidants. In addition, for those who are plant-based or cooked food vegans, stocking up on beans, pasta, rice, and potatoes will be a huge part of this category and will be important for you. And let's not forget frozen foods. Get a garage freezer and fill them up with frozen fruits that you can use. You can freeze bananas, berries, mangoes, really any fruits that you can find. I have at least 60 pounds of ripe peeled bananas in my freezer right now. Bananas are inexpensive and they're one of the easiest fruits to freeze, to make smoothies with and more. I also have a full freezer of mango that I processed from this summer. My neighbor dropped over a thousand pounds of mango on my porch and I froze all of it for an emergency situation. Make sure that you have a good, long-lasting, high-speed blender that you can count on. I recommend a Nama C2 for situations like this because this machine is a blender and a juicer in one. A link and a discount is below for you. Another idea is to make your own nut or seed protein bars and freeze them. Next up, let's talk about water. As you can see here, I am standing in front of my water well. Water is another essential thing on my list here because you cannot survive without water. While I mentioned the water filtration system that connects to the power system and solar panel, I also recommend collecting, separating, and storing water for drinking versus other uses. You can anticipate that there will be a shortage of water if there's a shortage of food. For those of us who grew up in the southern states, it's just like hurricanes or hurricane season. You can assume that any remaining water from county pumps might get contaminated. So let's first talk about drinking water Here's how I'm preparing. Let's talk about my water well. My property is currently running on its own water well. I do not source my water from the county. I think it's very important to not be on county water if you can. If you are, you need a good filter and you need to start filling up five gallon jugs to have as a safety net. Another great option is an Aqua True water filter. It removes 99.9% .9 of all contaminants from your water. It can literally turn Coca-Cola back into water. You need something like this. AquaTrue has been so gracious to provide us with a $100 off link for you. It's below in the description. I would buy your own five gallon jugs and fill them up. The goal is to have at least 15 gallons stored for emergency use. 
As for water that you'll need for day-to-day -day things, I recommend getting big barrels and having the excess water there for emergency use. If worst comes into fruition, you can always filter that water. Make sure you have water for drinking and then water for other necessities. Another idea is to find local streams or freshwater sources where you can easily load up on water. And please make sure that you have enough water for your pets and furry friends as well. Another important thing we need to talk about are supplements. If we do find ourselves in a precarious situation, be sure to have your supplements on hand. I'm talking about green superfoods, Sun Warrior Protein with 19 different amino acids. I'm talking about both vitamins and minerals, not synthetic. Make sure they are made from whole foods. I'm also referring to different liquids or perhaps juices. Get a Nama juicer. Use your nuts and seeds to make fresh nut milks that you can store or even freeze. You can even use your sprouts to make fresh milks. Next up, let's talk about dehydrated foods. Purchase an abundance of your favorite fruits and vegetables and dehydrate them for later use. You can make your own sun-dried tomatoes, dehydrated banana snacks, dehydrated pineapples, and so much more. Also consider fermented foods. Not only do they have a longer shelf life, but also they are wonderful to help you build a healthier microbiome. It is so easy to ferment your own foods and they will last for up to a year. Please see the cabbage, beet, and carrot slaw I made with apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, and salt. It's filled with great probiotics and natural cultures from these fermented foods that will help aid with digestion. That recipe is also featured in my app for you. You can also get into canning. I'm not really a fan of canning, but if you like the idea of canning, go for it. Since we're talking about dehydrating, let's also be sure to talk about herbs, spices, and teas. As you can see, I am standing in front of one of my herb beds right now. I have loads of basil, parsley, cilantro, and more. And growing fresh herbs is always wonderful because you can dry them and store them for later use. Stock up on the easy things like herbs and spices that will help you mix up your foods from time to time so that you can keep your palate excited. And let's take a moment to talk about pet foods. We cannot forget about our furry friends. Make sure to get bins for large amounts of dried pet foods or stock up on ingredients for fresh food or even stock up on canned food for them. Make sure there is also enough water allocated for them in your water storage. All other necessities for them need to be accounted for as well. Please remember that they rely on you wholly for their wellness and safety, so please be sure to stock up for your furry friends and your loved animals as well. And since we're talking about emergency situations, we also really need to make sure we're talking about energy and basic necessities like generators, sun panels, and lights. Be sure to have those on hand. And depending on where you live, consider fire and warmth. Make sure you have lighters, matches, heaters, blankets, or fans, and make sure that you have appropriate lighting for any situation. This includes lamps, flashlights, candles, and lanterns. Let's not forget about hygiene products. You're going to need hygiene products like wet wipes, rags, skincare products, and soap. You're also going to need buckets and storage bins in which to store all of these things. Trust me, those come in handy. And since we're talking about handy, let's talk about handy tools like hammers, shovels, pocket knives, machetes for coconuts, tape, rope, or whatever you think that you might need. And not very many people talk about this next one that I'm gonna mention but make sure that you have adequate mental health support for yourself. Get books, games, puzzles, fun movies, happy movies, movies about love, or even videos that you like to enjoy. We don't have enough people talking about how to mentally get through these types of situations and how to create support systems for yourself. So not only set yourself up with 
the resources, the knowledge, or the books that you need to keep yourself encouraged and positive, but also make sure you have the right community around you to keep you mentally healthy as well. This next one is really important. Make sure to have your important documents on hand or stored in a safe place. Have your most important papers, deeds, titles, passport, insurance, identification, birth certificate, maps, valuable family memorabilia tucked away safely. I would even make copies and scan it all onto a backup hard drive just in case. Call me crazy, but one can never be too prepared for these things. It might help you get organized as well. Emergency finances. If you're gonna store away your important documents, be sure to put away some extra money or finances for you to have in these types of emergency situations as well. Even if you have money stored away for emergency use, keep in mind that not all value comes from money or cash. Find things that other people might consider valuable that you can trade. An example here would be gold, it would be food. Think about what you have that is of value that can be exchanged in an emergency situation. And if possible, talk with your loved ones on how you can create more community for support in these moments. Discuss ways to stay in contact with family and friends to simply talk about how you can support one another if something like this were to happen. It doesn't have to be everyone around you, maybe just your closest family members or friends, just so that if something like this were to happen, you're all prepared and on the same page. It's getting your ducks in a row. And lastly, I wanna share with you one final bonus recommendation, and that is to stock up on some fitness equipment. Now this is a bonus recommendation because having fitness equipment around your house is not a necessity in an emergency situation. However, I've noticed that we all have our things that keep us uplifted and positive during hard times and something we can do to keep ourselves in good physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual shape is to have consistent movement and exercise. I don't know about you, but I am a better person when I am moving my body and when I am physically active. I love doing yoga, I love doing HIIT workouts, and mentally, it is just so much better for me to keep up with my fitness or movement routine. I know this is not a necessity for a food shortage or emergency, but I wanted to include it here because it is important. So get yourself a yoga mat, get some weights, get some fitness equipment, something to have around in the house in case you're home for a while. You can create your own fitness routine and it is so good for your mental health as well. I hope that you all have liked this video on how I'm preparing for an emergency food shortage. And I hope that everything that I have spoken about in this video is helpful for you, even if you are just pursuing a plant-based lifestyle or even getting ready for winter. If you have liked it, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because there is only more goodness to come. If you're interested in getting an ideal living solar panel and power system for emergency situations, and if you're interested in getting an Aqua True water filtration system, please check out those links below because I have $100 discounts waiting for you. There's no code, you just need to make sure that you are clicking on those specific links. Those specific links will take you straight to their discount pages. You can't find these discounts anywhere else, so please be sure to use those links and share them with your family and your friends. If you're interested in any of the other items, seeds, or supplements that I mentioned in this video, all of those links are also in the description below for you. And I even created a blog post referencing everything that I've talked about and all of my resources for you. So those are in the description for you. Please check them out and use this video as a forever resource. My intention with this video was to share with you how to prepare for a food shortage and also to provide you with the knowledge and education needed so that if any one of these situations were to ever happen, you can not only survive it, but you can thrive it. Thank you all so much for joining me in this video today. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Sending you all my hugs and my love. Bye.